In today's video, we're going to take a look at the order of events in Combat Table and discuss how combat works in the Mincer edition of Dungeons & Dragons. This is also commonly referred to as the Redbox D&D, Beckme, or in the Rules Cyclopedia. Now this video is going to be divided into three separate parts. The first part is we're going to take a look at the order of events in combat, rules as written. Well, sort of. You see, between the additions and the revisions of Dungeons & Dragons, from the Moldvay Cook revision to the 1983 Mincer edition and into the Rule Cyclopedia, there's a lot of missing rules, clarifications, contradictions, and discrepancies. And a lot of those are going to fall into the combat section. So what I'm going to do for you today is I'm going to piece together every bit of information that I can find to give you the best version that I can produce as a rule as written for Beckme. So with that in mind, in part two of this video, we're going to take a look at a few of the things that are missing from the order of events and combat table, and a few of those discrepancies, and why so many different dungeon masters run combat different in Dungeons and & Dragons. And just as a forewarning, it is definitely okay if a dungeon master does. The Beckme system is very good at allowing for a bunch of different ways to run combat. So you may run combat a lot different than what I'm going to present here, and I would be interested in hearing what you do different or what you do the same with combat at your table, so be sure to leave a comment below. And then in part three of this video, I'm going to share with you how I run combat in Beckme, and I will give you a spoiler. I really simplify it. I remove a couple of rules, and it runs nice and smooth for me. So we have a lot to cover today, so let's get started. Now, Beck Me Combat can be orchestrated by the Order of Events table. But before we even dive into this table and begin our first round of combat, the Dungeon Master needs to decide if one or the other side is surprised. In order for the Dungeon Master to determine surprise, they're going to roll 2d6. They're going to roll a six-sided die for the monsters, a six-sided die for the player characters, and if the result is a one or a two on either die, then that side is surprised. And if the player characters or the monsters are surprised, then they are going to skip round one of combat. And of course, if the result on both dice is 3 through 6, then neither the monsters nor the player characters are surprised. Now, I'd like to talk more about surprise, and we'll do that in a future video on running encounters. So now that surprise has been determined, let's jump into the order of events in combat. Now, this table begins with step 1, which is intentions. During the intentions phase, the dungeon master is going to ask each player what they intend to do in combat. And there are four possible replies to this. The first thing that a character can do is they can throw or fire a weapon. This includes throwing an axe or shooting a bow. Or they can cast a spell or use a magic item. Or they can participate in hand-to-hand -hand combat, perhaps with a sword or a mace. And then the final thing that they can do if they're already in hand-to-hand -hand combat is they can try to perform a combat maneuver to try to get out of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Now, one important thing is targets are not selected at this time. We'll select our targets for our intended attacks here in a little bit. After intentions have been stated by the players, then we're going to roll for initiative. The Dungeon Master is going to roll a six-sided die for the monsters, and one of the players is going to roll a six-sided die for the entire adventuring party. Now, there is an individual initiative that's listed as an optional rule in the player's handbook. If you'd like to see a future video on individual initiative or other types of initiative, be sure to leave a comment below. But today, we're just going to deal with group initiative. And what I mean by group initiative is that all of the monsters or all of the player characters are going to take their turns at once. Now, whichever side gets the higher result on the six-sided die is going to act first in combat. But if both sides get the same number on their six-sided die, then we're going to have what's called simultaneous action. And that means that the player characters and the monsters are going to take their turn at the same time. That's a little bit of chaos, but it's what makes Beckme fun. And in fact, in fact, a player character and a monster could technically kill each other in combat, reduce each other to zero hit points in a simultaneous battle. 
Now, after initiative, we're going to move into actions, and whoever won the initiative is going to act first. So in this round, we're going to say that the player characters won initiative. Now you see that the next step is a morale check. Now that's something specifically for the dungeon master, so we'll skip that for the player characters. The second step in the order of events and combat table is movement. Now every player should have their movement speeds indicated on their character sheet. There's three different movement speeds. There's a normal movement speed that you use when you're not in combat, but then combat itself has two different movement speeds, a running speed and an encounter speed. So during the movement phase, characters can move up to their encounter speed and make an attack, or characters can move up to their running speed but are not able to attack. Also, if a player character declares during the intention step that they are going to cast a spell or use a magic item, they cannot move. They have to stay where they're at. And then finally, if a character is already in hand-to-hand -hand combat, the only way that they are able to move is with a combat maneuver. And we'll get to that in just a second. After movement, we're going to come to Missile Fire. So at this time, all characters that are going to fire a bow or throw a weapon would select their targets and roll their attacks at this time. Now it's very important to remember that a missile fire device is a weapon that fires missiles, such as a bow or a crossbow. Devices cannot be used in hand-to-hand -hand combat or against targets within five feet. So a character trying to shoot a bow or a crossbow at either a target within five feet or while in hand-to-hand -hand combat is going to automatically fail. After missile fire, the next step in the order of events in combat is spell casting. So if you declared that you're going to cast a spell or use a magical item, it's at this point that you would pick your targets. And just as a reminder that you cannot cast a spell or use a magical item if you already moved during this round. And one more thing of great importance to note, and we'll discuss this when we go through a second round of combat, is if you took damage during this round, your spell is interrupted and fails. You lose the memorized spell and your turn is over. And then finally, the last part of the order of events in combat is the melee step or the hand-to-hand -hand combat. If you declared a weapon attack or hand-to-hand -hand in the intentions phase, now you're going to select your target. You can swing your weapon and attack. Now, as a reminder, you're not able to move once you are in melee or hand-to-hand -hand combat, but there's two combat maneuvers that you can do to try to get out of this. There is the fighting withdrawal and the retreat. There are actually a few more that are in more of the advanced sections of the Beck Me series, and we can discuss those in a future video. For now, we're just going to concentrate on these two. Now, a character that wanted to do a fighting withdrawal would have to have said this during the intention step, and it's during the hand-to-hand -hand phase that the fighting withdrawal is going to happen. With this maneuver, the character backs away from his enemy at a rate of 5 feet per round. He makes no attack unless his enemies follow him later in the same combat round, on the enemy's own movement phase. If they do, he can make his attack at the end of the enemy's movement phase, before the enemy begins their own attacks. Now, a retreat is another combat maneuver that needs to be stated during the intention step at the beginning of a combat round. The character can run away from his enemy at greater than half his encounter speed up to his full encounter speed, but he's going to forfeit the armor class bonus of his shield. Any enemy attacking him later in the combat round, that is either an enemy who followed him during the enemy's movement phase or an enemy attacking with a ranged weapon, receives a plus two attack roll bonus this round. Now after the hand-to-hand -hand combat phase, then the side that lost the initiative is going to get their turn to go through that same list of actions. Now if this part of the round is for the monsters that is controlled by the Dungeon Master, the Dungeon Master would make a morale check if necessary, and again we'll discuss that in a future video. After the morale check, then each of the monsters gets to do their movement, and then after movement it is the same as the player characters. We're going to have missile fire, followed by magic spells or magic items and then last but not least hand-to-hand -hand combat or melee. So that is going to be the end of round one and at the end of this first round the dungeon master is going to look at the player characters once again and we're going to state the intentions whether or not they're going to be casting a spell, 
firing a missile weapon, attacking with a sword or a mace or a weapon, or if they're going to perform a combat maneuver. And then we are going to roll for initiative. The dungeon master will roll a six-sided die for the monsters, and one of the players will roll a six-sided die for the adventuring party, and whoever wins will begin round two. So let's say that the monsters got initiative. Now, we've already gone through the order of events in combat for the table, but there's two things that I'd like to point out. If you recall during the intention step, we asked each of the player characters whether they intend to attack, fire a missile weapon, cast a spell, or do a combat maneuver, but we didn't ask them to select a target. Now, with the monsters having the higher initiative and going first in round two, that is when that's going to come into play. Let's say a character said that they're going to cast Magic Missile, but the adventuring party lost the initiative. And now a monster comes up and hits that character, that magic user or elf, that's going to cast a Magic Missile and takes damage. Then that player character that was casting the spell is going to lose that spell because they took damage this round. So when it comes turn for the player characters to act, that spell caster is not going to be able to move, they're going to lose their spell, and they're going to lose that memorized spell. So they won't be able to cast it. A complete loss of turn. If the monsters go first and one of the characters was doing a retreat, then that monster is going to have an easy plus two to the hit. Not only that, but the shield isn't going to count. Now, once the monsters have completed all of the steps in order, as per the order of combat table, then it's going to go to the player characters who lost the initiative. And once they've gone through all of the steps, then we'll roll for initiative for round three. So that's how you run combat in Beck Me or Basic Dungeons & Dragons, the Mincer Edition. But there was a few things that were missing or you might find different. So let's take a look at a few of those. Probably one of the most glaring observations that you can make is where does turning undead fall into? There doesn't seem to be a spot for it in the order of events in combat table. Well, this is one of those rules that is generally left up to the Dungeon Master to decide. But I would encourage Dungeon Masters out there once you start playing a Beck Me campaign and wherever you decide to put Turning Undead that you are consistent throughout the rest of your campaign. Now this is something I did do a lot of research on and I reached out to the social media Beck Me Facebook groups and received quite a few different responses. But it seems like most Dungeon Masters put the Turning Undead ability by clerics into the spell casting or magic item phase. And in fact, Frank Mincer himself even mentioned that this this is where Turning Undead goes in his game. Now that doesn't mean that this is where Turning Undead needs to go for you, and in fact there is a few folks that like to put Turning Undead during the movement phase. And there's even a later edition past the rules cyclopedia that does clarify in that edition that Turning Undead goes during the movement phase. So again, totally up to you as the Dungeon Master. Now another question you may have is if someone is Turning Undead, do they get their movement? Most of the folks that I have talked to said yes, you can still move and turn undead, which makes sense. If the cleric is in the back of the party, they're going to want to run up to the front, shout their words of holiness, and hopefully turn the undead. So the whole turning undead thing is basically up to the dungeon master. Be sure to leave a comment below. How is this run in your game? Now another part of combat that is unclear and ran differently by a lot of different dungeon masters in the Beckney system is the intentions phase. Some dungeon masters only ask for spell casters to declare intentions, some ask for everyone to declare intentions, and some dungeon masters just skip this step entirely. And in fact, the order of events in combat table is different in the rule cyclopedia and the red box player's handbook than it is in the dungeon master rulebook for the red box. In the red box dungeon master rulebook, you can see intentions at the top of the chart, but in the player's manual and the rule cyclopedia, that step is missing. Now another part of Beck Me Combat that isn't entirely clear is movement and spellcasting. I looked all over through the red box and the rule cyclopedia and was unable to find where it stated that a spellcaster could not move in combat. But I went back to the previous edition, the 1981 Moldvay set, and in the expert set it did state that those that are casting a spell cannot move in combat. 
But not only that, if you were to look in the red box or the red book in the Dungeon Master rulebook, it does say in the magic items section that those that are activating a magic item cannot move. So it can definitely be deduced that in the back me system, if you are casting a spell or using a magic item, that you're not allowed to move in combat. So here we are in part three of the video, and now I want to share with you how I run combat in the Beck Me system. The very first thing that I do is I take the intention step and I crumble it up and I throw it away. I skip this step entirely. I feel like my game runs a lot smoother and combat is a lot faster if we just roll for initiative and dig right into the actions. Now by removing the intention step, that also means that spell casters don't have to declare whether or not they are casting a spell or using a magic item until they actually do so. And with that in mind, that eliminates any chance that the character's spells could get interrupted and losing a spell slot if they're damaged beforehand. And then finally, since we don't have the intention step, what I like to do during movement is I have removed the rule that you can't move if you are in hand-to-hand -hand combat. And since the characters can now move away from hand-to-hand -hand combat during their movement phase, that means that we no longer need the fighting withdrawal or the retreat and I found both of those a little bit complicated anyway. One of the other things that I do in my own initiative is if a character wants to switch weapons, I allow them to do that as a free action. So if they were going to shoot their bow, but then they're confronted by a monster in hand-to-hand -hand combat, they can reach for their short sword. No problem at all. So the order of events in my combat table when I am running a game of Beck Me is we start with initiative, we go to our actions, and it's during our actions phase that you can decide whether you're going to shoot a weapon, cast a spell, or attack attack in hand to hand. Now again, this is just the way that I run things and I want it to be a lot smoother and for combat to go a lot quicker and I just found that these modifications worked really good for me. And with that, that is going to end my video with the order of events in combat and how to run combat in the Beckme system, the Rule Cyclopedia, the Mincer Basic Dungeons and Dragons set. Be sure to leave a comment below. How do you run combat in your game? What are some of the things you do the same and what are some of the things you do differently? And if if I got any of the rules wrong, be sure to leave a comment below. And if you'd like to see this Beck Me series continue, be sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and let me know in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching, and on to the next.